Hey, well, a very good afternoon to you. My name's Chris Gosling. It's Monday afternoon, so it must be Monday afternoon live on Retired People's Club. And you probably just had a little look at the title of the first piece we've got coming up, but there you go. That's um, an item about hobbies. And later on today, we've got another little item just to wrap up our coverage, <coughs> excuse me, of Armistice Day, where we're looking just briefly at some of the wars that have happened since the end of the First World War. The First World War is certainly the biggest war we've had, I think, ever. Um, although not necessarily the biggest in the world. Um, but it's certainly the biggest that's ever affected us or the Western world. And uh, with, what was it, 800 odd thousand men, servicemen killed, it's worth remembering and important to remember. But it's also important to remember the war since in the uh, Second World War, for example, around 380,000 uh, British service people died. What can you say? And since then, around another 10,000, I think, or 7,000 rather, since the Second World War, 7,000 more service people have died, effectively in the defence of our country, although really possibly in defence of our country's objectives. What can you say? Um, so it's a lot of people, and I think it's infinitely worth re remembering. So there you go. That's <clears throat> what I want to uh, start with today. That was the, the kind of thing that uh, I wanted to mention because I don't know about you, but I got a bit fed up with the way the media were covering it. It was, it was really intense coverage. And uh, I think many of us in our generation, uh, the older generation, if you like, know the story infinitely well. My great grandfather, I think, was killed in the First World War. Uh, my dad was uh, in India in the Second World War. I'm glad to say he survived. And uh, a, a cousin of mine was a Japanese prisoner of war. His his passed away a, f a good few years. And um, I must say, we need to remember those guys from the Second World War as well. Some of them who died in unspeakable conditions. I think that's the only thing I can say. Unspeakable is the word I'd choose. <clears throat> so there you go. That's that's the thought for today. Um, a few things to mention today as well. I want to just get. See if I can get something to do some work for me. Come on, you silly machine. Do some work. It doesn't want to. Um, well, I know what I can do. I have, to, I have to remember to be clever sometimes. I'm not very clever, as I think many of you know. Um, <laughs> but I do the best I can. So here we go. So one of the, the first thing I want to mention today is an interesting one, because one of the things about the internet um, that I think is really... Um, a little bit odd, don't you? I think it's quite strange. Is something that we um, we call fake news, I suppose, but it also counts for a lot of other things. Like, for instance, it counts for um, reviews and stuff. Because nowadays people get paid to review products, and and I find that really awful. They get paid to re re review books. Uh, people get paid to record review all kinds of stuff. Um, and do we think that's right? don't think we do. So <clears throat> I'm just going to show you a website. Now that's a, a, a website called Review Spot, and it's run by an old friend of mine, a lady called Janice Rosser. And Janice is one of those people who I think is a bit pathologically honest. She used to run a website called Ops Chat, O-A-P-S Chat. Um, and that was really a very good site. Uh, it was aimed at older people. <clears throat> obviously and Janice did a really good job I think she found that it was becoming so expensive to produce uh, she did a lot of work she spent a lot of time and uh, I know one of the things that was very popular on her website was reviews and that's why she's gone on to produce this site called review spot which is that so I'll include a list uh, a link through onto review spot at the end of this show so you can take a look for yourself and see what you think of it but um, do trust me that uh, she is one of those people who wouldn't do a fake review to save her life much like me I'm afraid we did the best we can okay what we're going to do next well one of the things I want to get involved with or get you involved with I think possibly more than me uh, is I suppose we'd say I want to get you involved with talking about what you do as as individuals. Uh, I'm just having a fiddle with my mighty computer. You know how it goes. 
if I can work out how to do this computer thing. <laughs> okay, so we'll do that and that. Let me just summon that back to there. That's better. The, the issue I'm having at the moment, as you appreciate, is that I'm trying to put in more program content and I'm doing it on my own. I have a cunning plan to get somebody else to help me, which I hope should start next week. So starting next week, things should uh, kind of get a bit more, was I going to say professional? Probably not, I don't think so. Um, but things I hope as of next week will start to improve technically. And that would be, I think that would be a really good thing. But uh, I want to get you guys involved in talking about what you do as a recreation, as a hobby, as an interest. Ladies and gentlemen, the more information we have, the more we can share and the more we can spread the good news around. Tell you what uh, other people do and tell other people what you do for an interest. Because I know out there, there are thousands of people doing tons and tons of different things. Okay, have a look at this, see what you think. Hi, welcome to one of my favourite hidey holes, which is the Port of Felix, so near where I live. Um, as uh, an official old geezer for some years now, <laughs> you have to develop some interests and things that keep you a bit fascinated with the world around you. I've always been fascinated by the sea and ships. I've owned a few boats, sailed a bit, and uh, I still have a, a lively interest in ships and shipping. So I come down here two or three mornings a week and I film a ship or two. I run quite a busy little channel called Shipping TV. There's a link to it here if you like. And uh, it keeps me out of mischief, as well as, of course, doing my little blogs on uh, Old Geezer's Diary and looking after a retired people's club. So that gives you an idea of the breadth of things that I do, but I tend to do them all, um, if you like, in the same kind of field. So I'm filming stuff, I'm reporting on stuff, and, and essentially doing things that interest me, because that, I think, is a key to being reasonably happy when you retire, do stuff that interests you, and as long as you do that, you're okay. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's really true, but who knows. Um, it's a personal theory, I guess, and most retired people have got their personal theories about how they'd like to live their lives. One of the things I want to do with Retired People's Club is to actually build up uh, a better survey and a better look, if you like, of the recreational hobbies people follow, and maybe report on them if they're interesting enough from my point of view and from yours. If you've got a camera or a camera phone, record a few bits uh, and maybe a, 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 a few comments about your recreational hobby, whether you're male or female, and, and let me have a look. I'd love to see what you do. Uh, I'd love to be able to share that with the rest of the Retired People's Club community. So if you're interested, join up, get in touch with me, send me some stuff, and I'd, I'd be pleased to publish it. So there you go. Okay, I'm Chris. This is the Port of Felix, though. I'll see you soon. Uh, if you have an interesting, unusual, strange... No, I don't want strange, really. If you have an interesting, unusual, or usual and interesting recreation or hobby, then we'd like to know more about it on Retired People's Club. If you've got anything that you really like to do, I'd love to know. Um, and the reason I'd love to know is so I can sp spread the world. All of us now, almost all of us I guess, have um, phones with cameras attached. Uh, all of us now can record little bits about uh, a video about what we do. Why don't you do it and send me uh, the video. I'll help you by editing it or doing a voiceover or whatever you need so that um, your piece appears on this channel. It would be fun to do. It would be interesting to see what you make of it. I would love to see anything that you'd like to send in. So let me have what you like. Talking points for today. Well, a little talking point today. Two little talking points today. Two little talking points. Both of them a little bit contentious, but not very, really. The first one is uh, Danny John Jules, the, um, the dancer, the actor. What do you make of that? I think he was bumped off by the mighty BBC, um, essentially because he was causing too many problems and they, they can't handle it, and it was all too difficult, and it, um, it didn't help their programme, so goodbye, Danny. Um, what do you think? Do you think they bumped him off? 
I'd love to know what you think. Just add a comment onto this, uh, onto the video and tell me what you think. I'd love to know. Okay, that's point one. Point two, Doctor Who. I've watched Doctor Who since 1963 and these days, I'm afraid, I think it's Tosh, the current series. It's just like an American sci-fi series. There is nothing spectacularly interesting in it. It's just, it's kind of ordinary. Um, they come up with, I guess you'd say, ordinary stories, uh, ordinary acting. The actors are fine, you know, they're the same as any other actor, that's no problem. But the stories are just kind of commonplace, really. They come up with um, a different story every week. And it's a bit like going back in time to the stories that used to be on air when the first series and second series and third series, etc., started, because they're just single week stories. Um, they're, they're, they've got good technical stuff because the BBC has got good technical stuff, but in reality, um, there's nothing much to them, is there really? Do you think? I don't think there's the the standard that we got used to with um, the Welsh wizard, what was his name, Russell Davies, and uh, even Steve Moffat, um, who wasn't quite as good but was very good. Um, the the standard we come, came, got used to with those guys was truly excellent. And the reality is that the standard we're now getting is kind of about the same as the American reasonable value sci-fi series. It's just kind of a bit commonplace. Can I say that and get away with it? I think I probably can. Let's move on. Have you seen this one? This is a reminder of all the wars we've had since the Great War that have killed probably the best part of 400,000 British service people. And those people, as well as the victims of the Great War, those people who have died since, we must not forget.
And there you have it. That was um, some film that I shot to use locally um, <clears throat> to show people who couldn't get out or who didn't get out to show them what was going on in our local churches uh, to remember the fall of World War I at, uh, at the Armistice Day. <coughs> so that was, um, I found that quite touching and interesting to do. But I'm, I am concerned, and I think we should all be concerned, to remember the, the men and women who have suffered and died in war since. And increasingly now women as well, of course, young women, who have um, gone as soldiers and who also are standing every chance of being shot or blown up or whatever. Um, I think it's worth remembering them. And it's definitely, well, no, it's not. I don't think it's worth, it's definitely worth remembering them at the same time as we remember the fallen of the First World War. Okay, well, that, heavens above, that is about 20 minutes of Retired People's Club. I hope you like what we're doing with Retired People's Club. I hope you like what I'm doing with Retired People's Club. Don't forget that if you've watched this programme, got some element of pleasure out of it, I'd love to hear from you. Give me a like on Facebook or, <coughs> excuse me, a like on YouTube when we get to it. And um, I'd love to have that. I'd like to have a like from you if you like what we do. Okay. This is Retired People's Club. I am Chris Gosling. Heavens, am I? <laughs> and we'll be back with you soon. Over the coming week, we shall be having a new programme every day at about two o'clock. Tomorrow's will be a recorded clip or two. And those will be premiered at two o'clock on Facebook. They'll also appear on the mighty... Um, on the mighty YouTube as well and so you'll be able to get that there as well uh, I think it's a worthwhile thing to do um, and if you've got something you'd like me to cover if you've got a view you would like to express I would simply love to hear from you okay I'm Chris I'll see you soon take care now tell us what you'd like to know more about on Retired People's Club and let us know what you think about the world around us. You can contact us at any time through these web pages retiredpeoplesclub.blogspot.com, www.facebook.com slash retired people's club, www.youtube.com slash retired people's club, twitter.com slash retired people's club, email production at seriesleisure.co.uk or voice or text message us on 07943 043948 If you have a story to tell that may help other retired people, we'd love to hear from you. <laughs>